This uh, Earthmaster here checking in on this uh, end of the weekend, Sunday, January 31st. Also the end of the month, 2021, 8, 17 p.m. West Coast time in the state of California. Latest quake out there on the globe is a 4.2 striking out there in Chile. Seen that strike up on the um, live seismograph viewer just the, uh, a couple minutes ago. Some activity uh, kind of ramping up there in the South America area following that 5.7 up there in the northern part of the South America area. Other than that, uh, you know, there's just, we're not seeing the typical earthquake activity in areas where we should be seeing them. It's kind of in uh, some oddball areas, um, kind of southern Indonesia area. And also, like I said, in the parts of northern um, South America just kind of some oddball earthquake activity at 5.7 there striking in a region where we don't see a whole lot of movement but uh, nonetheless um, some activity there definitely being reported over the last 24 hours uh, small little earthquake there on the uh, northern california coast there on the seismograph stations not for sure exactly how big it is just a little microquake it looks like Looking at the uh, flat scale Earth there from the uh, USGS on the uh, all magnitudes map there. Not uh, Once again, folks, I keep saying this every night here on the update video, but not a whole lot of movement out here in the typical earthquake areas that we see through the western part and northern part of the, the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire. Well, we did have, okay, <clears throat> we had a 5.0 and a little bit smaller earthquake out there, 4.9. But, look at that. Okay, Volcano Islands, Japan region. So well south of Japan, but uh, I got that mark there, the Vol Volcano Islands. Okay, anyway, 129 kilometers below surface for that deep one. Um, but that's about it, folks. We haven't seen a whole lot of movement. Pacific Plate is very quiet. If you look at the if you look at the activity over the last few days or so, this is very quiet um, for the region. If you watch earthquakes and if you watch the plate tectonics in motion, you'll know that this is kind of an odd time right now for uh, for lack of earthquake activity out there. So. We'll see what happens. It's just, uh, I don't think uh, tectonics or plate tectonics are dying down, but uh, it's just, you know, kind of in that waiting period, being stuck. You know, it just uh, needs a little nudge and then uh, bada boom, bada bang, you got a big earthquake out there. Well, I'll go ahead and zoom in real quick, folks, to the West Coast area. And uh, even then, not a whole lot to report. Uh, Salt and sea, it looks like within the past hour. A little bit of uptick in earthquake activity out there in the uh, Brawley seismic zone there. Stretching into the northern part of that area, close, very close to the San Andreas fault system there. Little cluster of earthquakes once again, 13 kilometers over the last, or uh, 13 earthquakes over the last 24 hours there. Roughly about five kilometers or so below the surface. Something to watch very closely, especially right there at the Sleeping Giant, the San Andreas Fault there, southern end. One day we will see that thing light up, no doubt. But for now, uh, just kind of, uh, we got another 3.4 just, just hit, it looks like. We got 4.18 UTC time. So, what do we got here? 418. Yeah, just cut just a couple minutes ago. This 3.4 struck here in this little area where we've seen a uh, little swarming activity there. It looks like the biggest quake so far in that uh, cluster of quakes there near Ocotello, California. Um, not really associated with any specific fault structure out there. It looks like at the uh, Yuha Butte shell beds. In this shear area, we got some north-south, and also some uh, looks like east, northeast to southwest um, shear zones right there. I'm gonna have to watch that pretty closely. It's kind of a, a pretty good uptick uh, when it comes to the magnitude right there. 3.4, 11 kilometers. 
bigger mag magnitude and also uh, a little bit deeper there when it comes to the uh, activity there striking that region so gonna watch that pretty closely Ridgecrest Nevada looking pretty much the same we did have low earthquake activity out here around the uh, Willows area in Northern California uh, did see a 3.5 out there or a 3.7 I believe it was here a couple weeks ago that kind of woke me up out of bed did not feel this earthquake uh, kind of out there around the uh, we've got Princeton area out there there is some I believe there's some oil type uh, operations out there but the depth of this earthquake uh, 24 kilometers uh, I think that's going to roll that uh, any type of oil or pumping operations out uh, but this is pretty much a, a deep earthquake there and I believe this has to do with a uh, continued activity there along the Cascadia subduction zone with the trimmer map okay this is uh we'll go ahead and go let's go back real quick to the uh last day and we'll get back into the other activity here in a minute last 24 hours 490 that's just today folks still kicking up there in the vancouver island area and also into northern california we're looking at uh, a large scale movement of trimmer there in the slow slippy areas We'll go ahead and check out the last week, and this can give you a general idea of how much trimmer we have seen over the last week. Check out the movement in Vancouver area. Also stretching down in Northern California. So ultimately, if you are subducting a plate, a small plate, such as the uh, Juan de Fuca plate underneath a huge continent, such as the North American plate there, we're I lost my voice for a second there. Um, we're going to look at some potential, and even though it's slow, it's very slow, slow slip. That's why they call it the slow slip event. It does have an effect on the crestal areas of the North American continent, and I believe that's why we've seen the activity up there in Washington. We haven't seen it uh, today, but that's kind of why we've seen the activity at the surface areas uh, of Washington and also some activity in Oregon as well uh, due to the subduction of the uh, Juan de Fuca plate underneath the North American plate. It just doesn't, I mean, it's just gonna, it's definitely gonna have an adverse effect of, of potential quakes there on the, um, at the surface, or at least from the subduction area northward, or upward, I should say. Uh, so that could be anywhere from 30 kilometers down underneath here, underneath North American plate upward up to uh you know surface area so the uh, pretty deep quake that we've seen there in northern california today 24 kilometers has i believe that has to do with the uh the uh, subduction of the juan de fuca plate there underneath this north american plate it's a pretty deep quake 24 kilometers there um underneath uh, uh willows area so last week or at least within the week let's go ahead and check out the month of activity folks okay this is over the last month and if you've been watching the trimmer activity on your own or through this channel or any other channel here on youtube that covers the um slow slip events you'll know and you'll see time and time again that activity continues right pretty much from um, Vancouver Island area down through Washington in the parts of northern Oregon it kind of skips this area right here we'll get back to that here in a second in the parts of Eugene and down through northern California area kind of around where the Willows area is at right you see that stretching down around Chico and into Willows uh, right around where that deep earthquake struck today but we don't see a whole lot of movement and we haven't seen a whole lot of movement in this specific area Eugene to about Salem okay this this area right here I believe firmly is going to be the area where we see a major earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone at least um, here in this lockage area okay well the rest of the plates moving there and this area is really not for as slow slip events go um, I believe we're kind of seeing like a bowed area and uh, this is going to be the hot spot when it comes to uh, the potential rupture of the Cascadia 
in this area, I believe. Um, all data? Do I dare click it? I don't know. I guess we can. Let's check out this real quick, though. This, you guys see this little map here from 2010? Right about the time they started picking up the uh, um, slow slip trimmer along the Cascadia. You can see these counts. These are counts on this graph right here. The higher the graph level, the higher the counts. And the corresponding years at the bottom right here, okay? Uh, yeah, there's areas, you know, there's times when it seems like every six months or so we get an uptick in trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone there. But nothing like we've seen towards the end of 2020 and starting to be the beginning of 2021. We've seen more trimmer activity in history than we have seen uh, since we have been recording that trimmer activity there since 2010. So something's going on. We're definitely getting a uh, more trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. I don't know if I want to click the, uh, the search on this or not. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, why not right let's see what it does it might take a second i don't think it's going to crash my computer but we'll see give it a second folks it may take 10 or 20 seconds i mean i've never done the all data on this map oh yeah there we go okay oh <laughs> there we go so that's a lot of trimmer <laughs> we're looking at woo, wow hot mama look at that 457,000 epicenters of trimmer since 2009. Okay, so this gives you a pretty good idea of where it's happened. That area that I talked about there, north of Eugene, into uh, Salem area, is the weak, kind of like the weak spot in a way, when it comes to the less activity, less slippage area. Even though this map does show that there has been some over the uh, last 10, 11 years or so, not as active as the areas to the north and the south there. But uh, you guys get the idea where that uh, Juan de Fuca plate is subducting. I mean, that's the drawing right there. Request exceeded the 20,000 epicenter limit. Only 20,000 epicenters will be plotted. Uh, list not generated for more than 5,000 epicenters. Okay, so yeah there's a lot going on folks but this area off the coast of uh, oregon there is a kind of the area that uh i believe where we'll see the uh a rupture along the cascadia when that happens i don't know um i don't know if anybody knows but it's good to pay attention to the trimmer and um you know maybe that will be useful into uh possibly predicting uh, mega quakes along the Cascadia mega thrust area out here along the uh, western part of the North American uh, continent here. We'll just have to see. So zooming in here, following that 3.4 that we talked about just a couple minutes ago, we got some further activity uh, just to the south there in that other swarming area south of the border. But you know what? Borders do not matter when it comes to uh, plate tectonics out here, you can erase all the borders. Doesn't matter if it's Mexico, Canada, or the Philippines. This is all one continent out here in a major area for pressure uh, with the North American and uh, Pacific plate out here uh, doing some major um, bumping up against each other. 2.3 there, south of the 3.4 region, roughly about 10 miles or so. This one a little bit more shallower at 4.0 kilometers. Uh, so it's very possible we could see a, uh, uh, or we're starting to see a major uptick in activity in Southern California. Something to watch very closely as we're looking at the rest of the globe. It's pretty quiet aside from that prior 4.2. All right, folks, uh, what do we got here? Yellowstone National Park, uh, pretty quiet. Not even a whole lot to mention there couple small microquakes you can see very strongly there on that graph they're in the western part northwestern part i should say of the uh, yellowstone super volcano also uh let's go ahead and check out the uh volcanic activity there at mountain hood nothing to report it looks like of course uh i'd like to check the live release of most recent seismograph stations there 
to verify that information and I don't see this, this is turned up pretty good here. Um, those lines are pretty wavy. I don't see any type of earthquakes there at all. Anything. Maybe uh, potentially there quite a few hours ago. Maybe that one. But uh, other than that, uh, some of this is interference and uh, not for sure what it is. But no, no earthquake swarms there at uh, the volcano there at Mount Hood at the top of Palmer Lift. Uh, let's check out solar weather data real quick. There is a potential, a uh, fairly good potential for some uh, roar activity there at the higher latitudes. We're looking at a geomagnetic storm watch um, from NOMA. Forecasters are saying that a minor G1 class geomagnetic storm is possible February 1st, which is tomorrow, uh, through the 2nd when a solar wind stream hits Earth, Earth's magnetic field. Uh, we're looking at uh, Corona Hole Stream uh, from the south. Uh, we could look at uh, potentially 600 plus KMs when the stream arrives. Right now we're looking at solar wind at 318, so obvi obviously it has not arrived. Um, if it did, that would definitely be uh, um, way up there in the speed department. And also the, uh, the um, forecasting of the Aurora Borealis would be uh, much more um, heightened here. You would see definitely yellow, orange, potentially some red up here in the higher latitudes for uh, uh, from for some solar storms. So, but right now we're waiting on it. We'll see if it kicks up. Right now, no sign of it. The coronal hole that it's flowing from is. Uh, let's see if we can find that there. Well, we can look at it on this map here very easily. These are the coronal holes in the highlight there. This is the stream that we're kind of watching there for uh, some activity, geomagnetic activity on the first and second here tomorrow and the next day. So watch that pretty closely. Anyway, folks, have a good night. Uh, we are out of here. Southern California, watch out. Kind of highlighting uh, some heightened activity down there see if I got uh, I do have a couple seismograph stations there in the uh, region what do we got down there in Southern Cal of course Mammoth Lakes um, do I have Barrett Cal yes I do I well no that's Barrett Spur let me see if I can bring up I'll go ahead and bring that up here folks um, as I end the station or the uh, update video here but uh, hope everyone has a good night please stay safe out there and we'll chat you guys tomorrow have a great Monday peace out